What's up guys and welcome back to what I assume is going to be the finale of our Expeditions Conquistador LP. Now in the last episode we had stormed to Noctiland with the help of Tex Coco and all the other people that we had spent all of our time just kind of doing the whole Dragon Age thing and just convincing all the different groups of people to gather under the same banner. And now we're at the point where we need to go in and fight with Moctezuma's men. Barring any other things to do, I don't really feel like there's a whole lot of other things that actually need to be taken care of right now so I think what I'll do is I'll make sure that everybody's upgraded to the extent that they can be upgraded and beyond that I think it's gonna be go time so we are we have all of our XP used up so I may as well just raise everybody now I've got let's see here she's a hunter so I'm gonna give her relentless cuz relentless has worked out great Relentless has gone. Oh, never mind. She's a doctor. I thought she was a hunter. Doesn't matter. She never gets used anyways. So before I make myself look more foolish, let's just go fight Moctezuma. It's fine. Tanoctalan's palaces have not been treated well by the war. Already many of them are ablaze. Looters and invaders sharing responsibility for the destruction of the beautiful, elaborately decorated buildings. Skirmishes are taking place everywhere in the streets, and you have to fend off several hit and run attacks on your way to Moctezuma's palace. Moctezuma's palace has been turned into a makeshift fortress, a purpose it was clearly not designed for. The most elite warriors of the Aztec Empire have entrenched themselves within its walls. We'll send a scout to investigate. Actually, we've got loads of money. Let's just pay off the guards. You approach the palace with your weapons lowered and out of combat formation. The Aztecs still scramble for their weapons and hunger down behind the barricades. Through your translator, you offer the four guards at the entrance a sizable bribe to lower their weapons and allow you passage. They reject the initial offering. But you grease the wheels a little bit with honeyed words, spiked with subtle threats, and after a hurried round of negotiations, they take a thousand gold to split between them as the price. So there it is. We have money we're not going to spend anyway, so why not? The four guards exchange guilty looks as they accept your bribe, quickly and suspiciously seizing the chest of gold your servants bring forth and then disappearing down the steps of the palace and into the city. Though you've removed a not inconsiderable portion of the resistance you ought to have faced, the palace is far from unguarded. We begin the battle. Let's do it. Let's get down. Let's throw some fists. We'll throw some blows. Throw some nasty elbows. That's no fun. I got hit with an elbow once in a mosh pit, and that was no joke painful. So here we are. Let's actually take a look and figure out where the enemies are at. And is Moctezuma actually going to be in this battle? Or are we just fighting guards this entire time? Let's see here. No, it looks like we're just fighting guards. I don't see anybody named Moctezuma. So let's begin our invasion of the enemy. And so it's going to be their turn first, which is out of the ordinary for this game. Typically, this game tries to keep things on your turn first. You tend to get the first reaction, which is always nice. But sometimes I feel as though it gives you a pretty big advantage in the greater scheme of things. I'm going to have people take cover for this first turn. Even though I could close a sizable chunk of ground. God, it is so dark in this map. It is absurdly dark. Put some people out here that'll take shots. We can take random just kind of pot shots at people. I don't really think it's going to work. Let's make sure, though, that everybody moves up at least within their greens. And we'll take a blow dart shot at him. You never know. You could get a little bit of poison damage in or something. We've also got Alejandro Pintado, who should be able to make a decent shot from there. Ah, 5%, whatever. It's fine. We'll just kind of throw bullets down the hall and hope that something sticks. Always a good strategy, right? I mean, if you've got Spray and Pray, go with Spray and Pray. If that's the skill that you are acclimated to, I'm not going to cry about it. I have employed the classic Spray and Pray on many different occasions. What are they doing? They're falling back to this room, it looks like, for the majority of it. However, we've got one guy right there who looks like a witch doctor or a healer. I'm going to pull to over here with soldiers who have shields. And he should line up for the ass kicking of a lifetime if he actually steps out and in here. I don't think he's going to be that stupid. I think they're trying to bait me backwards. We also don't know how many traps are in this location. We could find ourselves running across a sizable resistance. No, he's just going to come right to us. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I'll take a free kill if that's what you want to give me. He didn't even get a swing off. He just did that in the most efficient or inefficient way possible. Swap to our halberd there, take a swing. Vidal's obviously going to rope a dope here and get a bloodthirsty proc. Well, not a bloodthirsty proc. She gets it every time. This guy looks like he's waiting for us in this room. I don't really know how I want to proceed, so I'm going to go slow. Yeah, there it is. 
That's about what I had thought. So we're going to send somebody through slowly and first. And we're just going to stand behind him with a doctor and heal all the way in. He's going to be kind of our tank. And so we'll wait for whoever comes to us is going to get dealt with. And then whoever doesn't come to us, we're just going to keep trying to sweeping the minefield. Minesweeper is a game that I've never been good at, though. So we'll actually see how this whole thing unfolds. Okay, and so we've got what looks like a safe trail over here. As long as we follow his footsteps exactly to make sure that we land in the right spot. So there we are. I only need a couple combatants to make this worthwhile. The other thing I'm considering doing is taking Coyotl and running down this loner in this room, which is a decent idea, aside from the fact that we may pop some traps on ourselves. So the doctor is the last person I want to take traps, so I'm going to step him off to the side for just a second. We'll send the hunter in. No spike trap? Oh, good. It's, it's worrisome. Spike traps do a lot of damage, so it can be kind of scary sending your guys through some of these hallways. You don't really know where they're going to be, and the AI doesn't necessarily place the spike traps in a spot that you would assume they would. In certain situations, you would think that they would just spike hell, they, they would spike trap the hell out of these, like these little corridors, so that I would be forced to run through them and just get mauled. They don't really do that, though, to be honest. They kind of just let it be. We're going to take a swing at him, maybe get a kill. We'll take a shot there, hope for a relentless. Nope, no double shot. But it's okay, we'll step this guy forward and we will finish the job right there. And without further... well, he doesn't have enough movement. I was going to try and pull him up against a wall or something, take a little bit of cover. Hope that he didn't get blasted in the long run, or at least zipped with a little dart. Zip. That would be unfortunate. He's still got a little bit of damage on him, so I'm thinking about... Nah, I'm not going to step the doctor forward. No point. We'll just wait and see here. Yeah, it looks like everybody else is kind of trying to hold back. It's... A weird strategy. There's a lot of cases in this game where I feel like they could have won if they had just bum rushed me, like outright just put their heads down, not used any strategy whatsoever other than going and just running at me. I they they could have won several battles if they had just done it. Like that's the one battle that I felt like I was going to lose. The fort was a combination of my own ineptitude and imperception, and then also the fact that they just didn't come at me all at once. They actually tripped over their own numbers. They couldn't get to me. They had to go single file through our gate. It just ended up being a mess for them trying to close gaps with me, so we're going to sweep this hall. I'm just going to have people walk forward with high defense, and hopefully we don't get pincered. If we do, I'll leave a melee in the back to help out, just to guard the dock in case. And these guys are going to go first down the hallway, and if they make it, they make it. There we go, net trap. That's exactly what I was hoping for. We actually want to bait as many traps out as possible here. So, Coyotes all used up. Let me make sure. Okay, we're good. Hopefully this isn't the final battle. I'm feeling very little worry here with the way things are unfolding. There are traps. I just had assumed we would be forced through a lot more barricades and things of that nature. I don't see anybody in here that is terrifying. So I'm going to have this unit just kind of sweep for traps real fast. Okay, no traps. And that entire entryway should be more or less safe. I'm going to leave people behind cover though. So that at least they're cornered off on this wall so that the enemy can't take any ridiculous shots at us. I am glad that there's not any problems here because walking through just mounds of spike traps, having to heal every couple steps with a doctor, wasting turns, just healing and healing and healing and healing, hoping for the best, it's not the way that I like to proceed. It's It feels cheesy to me. I know it's within the confines of the game mechanics, but it's still. I already do that in a lot of other games where it's like take two steps forward, fall back, overwatch, or reactive shot if you're playing like you know, Xeno, whatever, if you're playing uh, UFO, things like that, just kind of waiting for things to happen. So let's begin slicing our way through this barricade here. Just take turns having people take swings at it, and there it is with a nice relentless hit. Let's get rid of that one too, just in case we have to have multiple people take steps in here. I'd like to advance two by two rather than one by one, if at all possible. There we are. And so he's all out of movements, unfortunately, but we will pull everybody back behind a wall, and I'm fine with the pacing and the positioning of everybody here. This room is probably going to be trapped just to hell and back. It's going to be nasty in there, I can reasonably assume. The enemies don't give any indication. Like, they don't have any weird... Sometimes AI, when it's programmed, does odd things. Like, they'll step in between the traps, and it'll actually give away the locations of the traps. I'm going to go with Coyote for this swing, because we really need a kill right here. There it is, and so we have a death. We'll start stepping through the halls here and making sure that what's done is done. Yeah, that looks fine, cool. And so, 
let's advance everybody. I don't want to leave anybody behind because that leaves me with the possibility of getting people into melee that shouldn't be in melee. We've got a witch doctor running up on us, or a healer at very least, the shaman, and an eagle warrior. This guy looks like he's trapped by barricades, and he doesn't seem to want to take the initiative to come around. Let's take it slow in this room. Yeah, there's a net trap. That's to be expected. I knew terrible things were going to happen as I walked into this room. I was expecting Temple of Doom-esque, just a running the gauntlet type deal. It doesn't look like it's that bad, but they do have traps here and there. There's the kill. We also got a Relentless, which I will step up to this mob, and unfortunately it's not going to allow me to take a swing at him because we are out of action points, which instantaneously ends your turn other than moving. But we do have everybody else in the room. I think I'll start setting up my range guy to start working on the barricades or something. I don't know. We've got to get those barricades down, though. And once those are down, I think we're probably going to have another fight after this. This is probably like the Vestibule or something. He's going to crit, surprisingly enough, and take a 5% shot from the back. We've got another guy with a bow in here who missed a shot on a stunned target. Couldn't hit a barn's ass with a fistful of sand, unfortunately for him. And let's see who can effectively get into location first. That's my scout. Okay. I'm having trouble distinguishing the colors again. It happens sometimes. We'll stun him back just to avoid the possible recourse of taking damage there. We'll have Coyote go around, even though he's baiting a trap by doing that. And then we'll actually have this unit go over here, even though he's poisoned, and start working on these barricades. There's a net trap. That's about fine. We'll have him come over here and start working on a barricade, too, because we are going to have to make a run for this guy in this other room once we finish this one off. So I'll send the doctor over here to cure his poison in the next turn, maybe rearrange things a tad. Did I take a swing here already? I did. All right, so we're good. He's going to, the Spearman's going to move over to here and actually try and fight with us, which is a bad idea. I would have probably, well, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to gauge what the AI is thinking, but it is what it is. There's a kill right there. And then we will step my range guy over to there, have the doctor come over, cure this poison. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I love it when a plan comes together and things work out. Halberd this guy to death. Maybe get a Relentless here and there. No, well, wishes and so forth. Wish in one hand and pee in the other. Figure out which one will fill up first. Ooh, he sweeped us. Clever little bugger. So we will finish him off, and let's step everybody else forward. I think I want Coyotal in the center spot right here because he can also use that sweep attack. I'm going to have this unit fire. Oh, I think you can only melee maybe there we go yeah we can only melee barricades We've actually got to tear them down by hand he got a relentless which allowed us to destroy a barricade in a single turn i'm gonna have the dock come back over here and maybe throw a heal on somebody just in case we do a back-to-back -back fight you never know when something like that's going to show up and i'd prefer to have people in the best health possible no crazy malaria or sicknesses or anything like that where are you going man he's just running away he's trying to bait us across traps or something I'm just going to sit here and wait for him. I'm not even going to... I could have used my cleave right there, but since we're just going to waste our time here waiting for him to come back anyways, I'm not going to wander into a room full of spike traps and wonder what if. So I've cleared that little hex. He's not moving, so you know there's a trap right there. He's just like standing on it. Or is he all the way around by now? What's going on here? We have invisible Aztecs. Maybe it's LOS or something. You first, my friend. Okay, so you made it. And then you are next. And finally, we'll bring the range guy in. Maybe he'll hit the net trap or whatever it is they have stashed in here. Not sure why this guy is retreating. Oh, he's not invisible. He's just hiding in the darkness. Like the bat Aztec. There's the net trap. I knew there was going to be something in that hallway. I knew there was simply no... Oh, he blocked us at that. We got kind of... Her. Our forward mobility has just been blocked, so I'm going to take a shot at him. And there's 27 damage. At least it's something. We got the party started. Yeah, the trap's gone, so now he's going to charge and throw his life away. I'm going to step Coyotal over to here. He's going to take the attack of opportunity. Not a big deal because the fight's almost over. 
This unit's gonna step forward. And there it is. You know what I was thinking about the other day? It's weird how I never sneeze while I'm recording these. And I know I'm breaking like the fourth wall right now, but I never sneeze while I'm recording these. It's the strangest thing. Rather than simply fighting your way to the garden, you clear the palace's chambers of all resistance to make sure nobody can catch you in the back. Once you sound the all clear, a group of Totanak warriors move in to secure the entrance so you can prepare to face Moctezuma. Your people are scavenging the dead bodies when Tepic Toten walks into the building ahead of a small group of jaguar warriors. He approaches you with an excited gait while waving his hand in the air to attract your attention. Elgato del Splatter, Elgato. He, ex he places a slightly trembling hand on your shoulder. I cannot express how excited I am to see you standing here in Moctezuma's palace. What a momentous occasion this is. Have you found the Emperor yet? Not yet, he's holed up in the garden somewhere. The garden? I would never have thought to look there. Then we must regroup and confront him. I will join you under your command if you desire it. We could definitely use the help. He looks at his words and they nod back in reply. My words will stay here and hold the entrance while we deal with the Emperor. He has nowhere to go. Make sure you are prepared before we strike. I will wait for you here. We strike now. The Chieftain beams as you wish. Two of Tepic Toten's Jaguar warriors bring forth a large wicker crate loaded with high quality steel equipment while they, which they place on the ground beside you. Our best artisans have spent weeks working on this equipment, attempting to reproduce the techniques of your smiths. Now we will use it to kill the Emperor. It will be an honor to stand beside your troops in battle, Del Splatter. You make your way to the garden where Moctezuma is holed up. From a distance, it doesn't look like the group is made up entirely of his personal guards. It seems like a fairly makeshift group, but they do appear well equipped. The guards warn Moctezuma of your arrival, and rather than cower behind them, he steps forward, flanked by his high general, Quapatl, and strikes an imperial pose. He is glad in the garb of an eagle warrior beneath a Spanish steel breastplate. You! You have torn apart my city. When we have offered you nothing but our utmost hospitality, now you come here with that usurper to steal my throne and put him on it? That's my terrible voiceover impression right there. You think that the breastplate will save you from me? We got bullets, man! We got bullets, son! And so he turns his side to you and raises Maquatl, pointing it directly at your head. You get the sense that he's speaking to your troops as much as he's addressing you. Do your troops even know what they fight for? My people fight to defend their homes, to protect their families, their children from death and violation. We have everything to lose and that will drive us to victory. Tepic Toten interrupts from the back. Elgato del Splatter's people fight for freedom and justice to unseat an illegitimate ruler and bring freedom to these lands. Moctezuma sneers in a most unimperial manner. Does he now? Have you ever asked yourself how your trusted ally would benefit from this war? Have you ever questioned his true motives? Tepic Toten is turning scarlet with indignant rage. Enough, you will not tear my army apart with your venomous words, Moctezuma. Make your peace. Without further ado, Moctezuma raises his weapon above his head and shouts a short, stern command that resounds throughout the halls of the palace. I thought we were in the garden. Unless the garden is inside. That would be impressive. An indoor garden would definitely be commanding. We only get five guys? Oh, that's right. We brought what's-his-name. So I guess we won't bring... Who won't we bring? I guess I'll bring everybody, but... God, I don't know. I guess I won't bring arranged. I haven't really used him that much anyways. I mean, he gets shots off every now and again. Nine enemies remaining. And so here we are. We have a preparation phase, but... Oh, never mind. We just get our turn. Okay. Well, first things first, let's start this thing off with a nice lanterning. Oh, well, I'll do a lantern after I move. Let's see if I can unselect that there. So, a direct frontal assault here. It seems as though it's probably not going to end well for me. But, just kind of looking at... We're, we're smushed. So somebody's got to move just so we can flow into the room. Let's have... God. I guess I'll have people move to here. To, let's rotate this a tad. I'm actually having trouble seeing. I do like the colors, though. The stark colors here are easy to see. They're easy to navigate. Oh, he looks badass. Tepic Toten has, like, crazy, like, armor going on with, like, a sash. He's looking like a bamf. He's doing his thing. And I don't really want to leave my doctor alone. So, yeah, let's, let's veto that idea for a moment. And let's go ahead and... Place a guy right there and a guy right there, maybe. I know I'm going to get swarmed here and this is going to get nasty, but that at least gives me some kind of flanking going on. We'll drop a lantern right there. And at least that'll hopefully influence some crazy things to happen. Have everybody defend as they come to us. We are going to take some first strikes here, unfortunately. It's all part of the game plan. At least the doctor didn't take any damage there. I wasn't expecting that. That was a little bit more aggressive than expected. 
They do have ranged soldiers. God, we might have some trouble here. Oh, I forgot a guy. That's actually fine, though. That actually works out mighty fine. And so he's flanked, as is he. And we're going to continue throwing as many flames around the arena as possible during the course of this whole thing. Now, I'm going to have my doctor use a poison cure on Anna Vidal, because Anna Vidal doesn't even have any damage dealt yet. This is pretty much the end of the line for us. There's a hit right there. And then the other thing we can do is... Let's bring Tepic Toten up here. What's his ranged attack looking like? 34% chance of something? Okay, we'll take a shot over there. It's worth a go. You never know. And then he already used a heal. Part of me is tempted. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to use Sneak to move to there, I think. And that's going to allow him to come in and finish the job on this guy. Because right now, job one is eliminating reinforcements. If we can't do that, then we are just going to be outnumbered this entire fight. It's going to put us in just the nastiest of situations that we absolutely don't want to deal with. There's a poison spear to the face that Vidal has taken. There's a poison arrow to the dome that we've taken there. An unsurprising critical attack. We are taking some attrition here, so it's unfortunate. He's going to run through the flames and just burn himself ridiculously. They are doing a pretty good job of spreading damage around rather nastily. They're going to miss our doctor, though, with both shots, which is going to be good for us. So let's see what we can do here to help. We've got poisons all around. And so I'm going to have Ortega kill this guy. Give us a little bit of freedom here. I suppose it couldn't hurt to have Tepic Toten. God, I don't even know what to do. Tepic Toten can step to there with a big 53. We'll have the doctor kind of run back and forth playing Heelbot here. And that should keep us in the fight a little bit longer. Relentless? Bloodthirsty. It's fine. That'll help us on our next turn. We do need to clear out this flanking attack right here, which is job one. So I think what I'll do... Oh, I can't. I was going to have him step to there to hopefully avoid any nasty flanking attack on the next turn. But it's going to happen either way, so... Yeah, there's nobody I can conceivably... Well, Tepic Toten can go there and set up. And then we'll just kind of shift the line. Luckily, gardens are largely flammable. All those nitrates and everything all over the place. We're going to get a spear taken right there. A stun, okay. I'll accept it. There's an arrow shot to my eagle warrior, Coyotl. Another arrow there. We need to run down some of these archers, unfortunately. Which I think is going to be my first thing that I do. Let's run him down. And we'll get him trapped. So that we can at least get some of these like little ballistics out of the air. Because right now, we are just taking far too many ranged attacks. That was a headlong attack that I wasn't expecting. That was a head-on battle. The game doesn't very frequently throw you into situations like that, but I'm glad they did. This is more the fight that I expected to fight the majority of the game. Just one of those things where... Ooh, what should we do with Coyotl? Coyotl can either stay here and take a swing. Let's get some stuns in, and then we'll fall back with him and let the dock handle him on the next turn. And it looks like everybody has done their thing. Ooh, there's some more damage right there. This is going to get ugly. We're actually we're going to have casualties here. I can virtually assure that. Yeah, so there's one right there. It's okay, though. Tepic Toten's a pretty heavy hitter. Hope for a kill right here. No kill, but at least something. And why Coyotl is back here, let's get him healed. At least a little bit. So 35 puts him in a little bit better of a spot. We'll have him come out and start grappling with some of these range guys that are creating a problem for us. We may lose Ortega, but I'm not willing to have him break off his offensive. In fact, I'll have a Doctor lineup, so next turn the Doctor can do his thing first and foremost. We want Focus Fire over here, so I'm going to focus on this guy with the shield, I think. All right, there's another stun there, just alternating stuns there, which is a smart move, but I don't think it's going to save him. Oh, there... What was that? Suicide! Ritual fire suicide. And so let's get a antidote administered right here as quickly as possible. He's only got 30 endurance left, but he did proc a relentless, which is an awesome... He procced another one! I didn't know you could proc a relentless off a relentless. That's amazing. I love that. <gasps> no! 
Okay, so we got taken out by a spike trap, unfortunately. How much health does he have left? 21? I think we can shank him. Let's shank him, guys. We're gonna do it. Oh, he already used an action. Never mind. Eh, attack of opportunity, but I'm gonna pull him back so that, worst case scenario, we'll be fine. We're gonna finish off this Eagle Warrior here is... Where is... I think we already took out Moctezuma. He didn't have any crazy magic attacks or anything anyways, so it'll be fine. And Juan Ortega is going to strike that blow, and over here we should be victorious, so there we go. With only two, well, two guys down, that's worse than we normally do, but because Tepic Totem went down so soon, or I'm sorry, Coyotl, he doesn't get an injury. Trevino gets a harmless bone fracture, something that I've never heard of. Maybe it's just like splinters or something. You are knee-deep in the blood of the Aztecs. Quiapotl is dead. Moctezuma is lying among the flowers, sputtering blood, mumbling incomprehensibly to himself while butterflies idly flutter over his head. He reaches weakly out towards the colorful insects, but they evade his touch. Yeah, he's a warrior. Let's finish him. We don't want to... You walk over to the dying emperor and draw your knife. His eyes are vacant. He doesn't seem to notice you. His day's chattering reminds you of a small child. You lead your knife into his chest and through his heart. His eyes grow wide and he exhales for the last time. Tepic Toten suddenly looks much older. This is probably the most physical exertion that he has suffered in years. However, he no longer has the deeply troubled air that he has carried about him since the war kicked off. He casts a glance at the Emperor. Is it over? The Emperor is dead. The palace suddenly becomes very quiet. The muffled sounds of skirmishes make their way into the garden through the opening in the ceiling, but it sounds like the fighting outside is dying down as well. Looks like you're the Emperor now. Tepic Toten teeters for a moment, and one of his Jaguar warriors grabs his shoulders to keep him on his feet. The chieftain places one hand on the man's shoulder and leans against a stone pillar with the other. So many lives lost. I cannot decide if we should celebrate our victory or mourn our losses. The city is ravaged and we are honor bound to help in its restoration, but that will take months. I'm sorry. I should not burden you with my regrets. In your hour of victory, tonight I will throw a feast in your honor here in the palace. It will be an occasion for reconciliation. None shall forget what you have done for us here. Our people shall benefit from the bond of trust for generations to come. Please, I need some time to myself to let the events of these past few days sink in. Return for the feast tonight, and I will see that you are generously rewarded for your role in our revolution. As is your leaving the palace, Anna Vidal releases a forlorn sigh. Look at this city, the splendor of it. Even in its hour of ruin. If only we could have taken the city, we could have held all of these lands in short order. But our garrison is not strong enough. We have accomplished a lot here, though. Perhaps it is time we take what we have and go back to Spain. You return to the palace with all of your troops later in the evening. The palace still bears some of the scars of the fighting, but it's been cleaned up surprisingly well and is in quite respectable condition for a royal feast. Tepic Toten looks his old self again, and he's changed out of his jaguar warrior armor and led into a very fancy gown, or changed into a very fancy gown that you suspect he's pilfered from Moctezuma's wardrobe. You join him along with a careful selection of the city's highest ranking nobles in the feast hall and enjoy one of the best meals you've had in a very long time. The chieftain turned emperor signals his servants and they bring out four large chests full to the rim with gold and jade and valuable gems and pearls. Your people gasp with delight and there is much clapping and cheering from all throughout the feast hall. 12,000 valuables. I wonder how much they're going to steal when we try and walk that back to the, the ocean. When everybody is drunk and full from the splendid feast and it's getting late, you thank the emperor many times for his hospitality and graciousness and retire to your own quarters along with your troops. You've played an instrumental role in resolving the conflict between the Aztec Empire and the Totonac people. Your troops are markedly tired, not just from the night's feast, but from everything they've seen and done. It might be time to return to your ship and go back to Spain. Well... Let's see what's going on here. Oh, you will always be welcome in the Imperial Palace of Tenochtitlan. When you return, Tepic Toten takes time out of his busy schedule just to speak to you and catch up on what you've been doing and how it's going. So we've done most of the stuff. Let's resolve the storyline. I'm feeling content with the amount of completion. And so that's really... We only have like one outlying quest and it's one of those things that I don't think it's going to be vital. I really want to see what the final cinematic is going to be too. I'm very excited about that. I love things of that nature. Just that conclusive, this is what happened. I can remember on many occasions, mostly with the Fable series, the closing of the game just being magnificent. And so, I think that's what we're going to go for right now. We've got pigs and things of that nature. We don't really need to preserve anything, so I'm not going to worry about moving things. Yeah, 3,000 valuables stolen. God. Let's get off the road so that we can defend ourselves. See if we can find a path back up to the port, and then we'll finish off the episode. So let's haul ass. Because the file is getting large, the night is getting late, and the series has drawn to its conclusion. Let's make sure we're navigating properly. We are not. Just let me cut to the southeast real fast. And there we go. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. This has been one of those things that I never thought this series would become popular. This is one of those things that I kind of just threw together. It was a game that I was having a lot of fun with on my own. I had downloaded it just because I was really curious about the way that the game was going to be orchestrated. It seemed to have been stirring up some controversy on the Steam forums, a lot of debates and things going on. And I felt like I couldn't throw my hat into the ring without, you know, giving the game a chance and trying it out. So I'm really glad that I did. I cannot commend the developers enough on what they've done here. With the limited budget that an indie developer has, it's very rare that you see sweeping projects like this. Projects that are free roaming, they have the potential to have a lot of bugs, they have the potential for problems just because of their nature, but they've done so well with it. And it's been a long time since I've played a game that reminded me of the old Might and Magic games so well and actually brought back those nostalgic feelings and because of that I'm intensely thankful for the work that the developer team has put in. Really, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, I could go on forever, but I can. I literally can. It's a game that I would recommend to my friends, uh, my colleagues, my workers, just all my co-workers. I'm sorry, I don't have workers. Co-workers, things of that nature. I would recommend it to anybody. And so, it's the writing. I mean, fantastic the writing is fantastic for this game it's not what I expected from an indie title typically they tend to skimp on things like that and here there's none of that simplicity you find writing that was clearly done by somebody that knows their way around a pen they definitely know how to word things they know how to use adjectives adverbs all those lovely things that tend to it wasn't just like you take the city like it was flowery it was flowery and lovely and made me feel as though civilization was injected into the whole thing which you know, that's what you would expect to see. This is all ravaged land right now, and yet you've got Spaniards who are nobles. They're educated. They have... That would be how they would see things in their own mind's eye, I would assume. It looks like we got the watering hole on the way back to the pond, or back to the ocean, before we head back to, uh, to España. So, I think we have to cut a south right here. And let's take a final look. Yeah, we have to cut south, so let's maintain our way southwards. I wonder if our wife is going to come with us. If Tiana decides to make the trip with us, it'll be one of those interesting Pocahontas-type things where she goes back and makes the tour of Europe and possibly catches smallpox and then dies, as people did back then. People were not long for this world during this time period. If you were like 35, you were probably pretty ancient. And it looks as though we're almost there. So there's the port. I think that's where we're headed anyways. And so I think we got to cut pretty much east to get there. Let's cut across the swamps here and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. I say that all the time, but the chances of anything horrific happening on the way back are rather unlikely. And so there it is. Let's make our way back to the port. If they give me a surprise combat right here, I'll have to break off the episode and do another one. It'll be one of those things like, they just won't let me out. I can't leave. I'm glad we took that banner back beforehand, too. Another watering hole. There's watering holes everywhere. It's because we're in a swamp. Oh, we're in a swamp. If you wanted to you wanted to say it phonetically. Let's go back and see what's going to happen here. The Maria Teresa is safely moored at the modest pier, constructed to service the ships, bringing people and cargo to Fortaleza de Gutierrez. A small contingent of Spanish soldiers from Santo Domingo are garrisoned here to guard the pier. The ship is in good position. You can leave whenever you want. Of course, returning to Spain without achieving anything significant would not inspire a warm welcome. Let's go. Are you sure you want to leave Mexico and return to Spain? Let's do it. Let's return to Spain. With our long quest at an end, the time had finally come for us to return to Spain. Our journey home was quiet and uneventful, and in those silent days, we had plenty of time to contemplate what we had undergone and to think of memories of home. When we finally sighted the coast of Spain, we understood that we were not the same people who had left so long ago. No matter what lay before us, our life would never be the same. When we showed the king the meager treasures in our hall, he was outraged to find we had come back with so little. The whole kingdom heard of his majesty's disappointment in our capitan, and we were left with only memories as our reward. Thanks to the leadership of our Capitan, our Compañía returned to Spain even larger than when we had departed. Among the Burguesía, news spread like wildfire of our exploits, and soon many people flocked to our side. But even as we grew in numbers and prestige, 
those of us who had been there from the start held on to our special bone. We had been the catalyst that brought about the collapse of the once mighty Aztec Empire. From travelers, we heard that with Moctezuma slain, some peace returned to the new world. We knew, however, that the peace was temporary and that our achievements would never earn us esteem with our countrymen. In time, others would follow us and perhaps not be such allies to the Totonac as we were. But come what may, they would always remember us as their friends and allies. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. I I always love ending a series. I've got goosebumps right now, to be honest. I, it's been a lot of fun. I really do want to thank you guys for sticking with me from the beginning. I want to thank the developers as well. Jonas Weaver, who's been posting on the videos. There he is right there. And so I want to thank you for leading such a great team and making such a great game. I really do. All in all, I've had a blast with this one. And so thank you, everyone, for joining me in this LP of Expeditions Conquistador. I will see you in the next series that I decide to orchestrate. I'm not really sure what it's going to be as of right yet. But, you know, it's going to be something strategic, I think. I, I'd like to stick with either sandboxes or strategy. I've got several things on the... I've got Project Zomboid, which I've been toying around with, towing the waters with. I've pl I haven't played it since the last update, but there's also XCOM, although I don't know if I'd want to do like an impossible or a classic run. Just because my temper is amazingly short when I play that game. But in any case, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for joining me here for a very long, very fun series. I very much appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody.